questions from Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Seven trials of some experiment. Okay, so let's say this first thing is a success. What's the probability that we succeed on a given trial? 0.3. Okay, so let's invent something that has a probability of 0.3. What's the probability of 0.3? It don't have to be too, like, yeah. What could have a probability of 0.3? Three sided die? Uh huh. Do even make that? On a three-sided die, what is the, what's the probability of, of what happening? Rolling. Rolling a what? A two. A two, okay. What's the probability of rolling a two on a three-sided die? <coughs> One out of three. Is that what point three is equal to? Don't think it's close. What? Is it equal to one-third? does have a probability of 0.3. Turn into a fraction, use like uh, brain cells, and uh, a little bit of creativity. I'll wait. So for the next week, the, every day there's a 30% chance that it's going to rain. Every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and this is asking, What's the probability that it rains how many times? Less than, Less, than three. Less, than three. Less than or equal to three, right? So how many times can it rain? How many days can it rain according to K is less than or equal to three? Three. 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 Or less. Three. Zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Okay. So we want to find the probability of zero days that it rains, probability of one day that it rains, probability of two days that it rains, probability of three days that it rains. That would be four, five, six, and seven. Right? So if we're thinking maybe we'll calculate one probability and subtract it from one, because that's often a good idea. That's not really going to work out too well because then we have to figure out four, five, six, Seven, right? Figure those out and subtract that from one, and we can just calculate these four probabilities. So then, what's the probability that, say, it rains? Let, let's do the probability that it rains uh, four days, or three days, not four. Right. So the probability that it rains the first day? The probability that it rains the second day? Point three. The probability of the third day? So that's all three days. We've used up all the three days that it can rain. The rest of the days that has to not rain. So what's the probability that it does not rain? 0.7. How would you find the probability that this happens? Multiply. Let's multiply them all together. Okay. Is that it? That's the probability that it rains three days out of seven? No. No, no why not? Yeah, how many ways can three yeah. out of the seven days be rainy days? And how many ways is that? You can say it in, in, uh, in combination language. Like you don't have to say the number. 
seven C three ways. Okay, seven C three. So this probability is 0 0.3 to the third times 0 0.7 to the fourth. Okay, but there are seven C three of those. We add up seven C three of these identical things or multiply this by seven C three. So that's the probability of three. Probability of two is going to be incredibly similar. There will be seven C two. 3 to the 2 times 0.7 to the fifth. It will rain two days. It will not rain five days. That can happen in 72 different ways. Probability of one day it rains. What is 7C1? What's that one? Taking one thing at a time from seven things. How many ways can you do that? One. Seven. I can choose the first day, second day, third day, fourth day. I'm choosing one of the days to be rainy. I can do that in seven ways. Point 0.3 to the first times 0.7 to the sixth. And now this is really easy because it's going to rain zero days. Every day it's going to not rain. How many ways can that happen? Uh, just one. one. The one way is that every day it does not rain. Right? There's no way to change that up and mix it up. If I, if I trade two days, well, I've just trade, traded two not rainy days. And so that makes sense. So every day, so, so that's one way. So that, that's the uh, 7C0 part of it, right? Zero days that it rains. And we're going to have no point threes, right? No point threes in all of that. So it's going to be all point sevens. Point seven to the seven. That's all going to be. Failures in a row, point seven, point seven, seven times. So we find these probabilities, and we do what with all of them? Add them together. Add them together. Because it can happen zero days, or one day, or two days, or three days. This one? And the next one? Do all these and find the same numbers? Or different numbers? Mm -hmm. um, let's see, it looks like that it rains two days is most likely. Do we believe that? Yeah. Two days seems pretty likely. Uh, because what's like, if it's going to, if it has a 30% chance of raining every day, it should rain about 30% of the days, right? And what's 30% of seven days? About two. 2.5. 2.5? Mm -hmm. Sounds like you did the work. What's 30% of seven days? What's 30% of seven? You should. You're down for two. Two point one. Okay, so just a little bit more than two. So the most likely thing is that it will rain two point one days, but that's not an option. So two days is most likely. These numbers they seem to change, right? So we add them all up. How much? What probability do we get? Oh. See, when I was rambling on, would you add it together? Would you? Get? Point eight seven four. Point eight seven four. That's nice. Go round way up farther than you need to, and then when you round to three decimal places, you're sure that it's going to be accurate because you need more than needed, more decimal places than you needed. Uh, good Any questions about that? Does that make more sense now? Getting the given number of heads. Okay. So I'm going to toss a coin 20 times. Get 12. So heads? 
So this is going to go on uh, 20 times. And we want to get 12 heads. So we can get heads, 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 right? Like 12 times. Wow. And then after that, we get tails. So what's the probability of getting heads? Yeah. And of uh, getting heads? Yeah. Half a lot. All the way down to the eighth head. Okay. We skipped over just one of the heads. Oh no, the twelve. The twelve. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we get tails after that. What's the probability of getting tails? Half. tails in a row. So what's the probability of getting 12 heads in a row and then uh, 8 heads in a, or tails in a row? 12 heads in a row and 8 tails in a row. Half, 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 half. half right? What is it? What? Six? Share it with me. Not likely. Right? Yeah. But that is very specifically the probability of getting twelve heads in a row at the beginning and then the rest heads or, or tails in a row at the end. Right, but there's more ways to get 12 heads out of 20 flips. How many ways are there? 20, 12. So 20C 12 times this can happen. So 20C 12 times this probability, or 1 half to the 20th, just because they happen to all be half. Wait, what? If it, if, they, if it wasn't just happened to be that the probability of success and failure are the same, it wouldn't work like that. We could write 1 half to the 12th times 1 half to the 8th, but that's the same as 1 half to the 20th. So what does that come out to be? Let me multiply that by 20C12. It would be 0.1201. 1? Two, two, zero, one. If we were to calculate all the probabilities of all the different numbers of heads we could get, like 1 out of 20, 2 out of 20, 3 out of 20, 4 out of 20, and so on, what would be the most likely, do you think? What do you think would have the highest probability of happening? Getting 1 head out of 20, 2 heads out of 20, 3 heads out of 20? 10. 10. Why? Because, because the probability of getting a head is a half, so it should happen about half the time. So about half of the 20 flips should be heads. OK, that's 15. Do 44. 44. Okay, so this is an example where we, we find some data, we observe this, the free throws of this guy, and he turns out to be very good. He makes free throws 92.7% of the time. Um, so the only way that we could guess how likely it is that he'll make like the next shot. Just to look how good he's been in the previous you know, in the pack. Yeah. He's been 92 percent 92.7% good, so we assume on this next shot he's about 92.7% likely to make that shot and the next shot and the next shot and the next shot. Right? 
So we'll take that to be the probability that he makes the shot, just like the probability that you'll get a heads, the probability that you'll pull a one out of a deck, or that's not possible, pull a two out of a deck, or uh, roll a six, or whatever, right? It's the probability that that thing will happen. Okay? So that thing, taking a free throw shot, he's going to do that a bunch of times. How many times is he about to try and make free throw shots? He's going he's gonna to shoot 15 times. Okay? And he's going to, we're going to see how likely it is that he makes exactly 10. Not 10 or more, but exactly 10. Okay? So he's going to take 15 shots. So he, you know, is successful. He makes it. Uh, we'll call it win. He wins. He wins the free throw. What's how likely is it that he'll do that? Right. So point nine two seven. How likely is it that he'll make the next one? Point nine two seven. And he's gonna make it again and again and again and again. He's gonna make it ten times in a row, right? Five. Point nine two seven. All right. about Just keeps on making it. Keeps on making it. Keeps on making it. All the way through the tenth shot, and then the eleventh shot, he does what? He not makes it. He not makes he not it. Makes it. <laughs> How likely is that to happen? And then he misses again, that's 0 .0, 0 0.073 likely to happen, and again and again and again, until the last shot he misses again, 0 .0073. So, of course we're going to count all the ways that he can make 10 out of 15 shots, but if you were to make the first 10 in a row and miss the last five, what's the probability that happens? We just multiply the probabilities together, right? So we're gonna multiply all of these together, right there. 0.927 times itself 10 times. 0 0.073 times itself to the fifth power. You can see where I can just use the formula to fill this stuff in. Uh, and the reason for this piece right here, that's going to go right here, is that there is not just this one way that we can make 10 shots out of 15, but if we find all the ways that we can arrange these 10 wins among these tw these 15 shots, we find that there are 15 C10 ways for that to happen. Okay. That would be it. We just multiply all that together. What does that come out to be? 0 0.0029. Now, hold on. Is that very likely? That's incredibly unlikely. It's less than 1%. Isn't he really good? Yeah. And is it 10 shots a lot? No. If I made 10 out of 15, I, I'd feel pretty good. Um, so why is it so unlikely that he'll make 10 out of 15? Doesn't it seem like he's good enough to make 10 out of 15? But this is, like the probability that he'll make 10 in a row and then five in a row he'll miss, uh, that's not this probability, that's actually even smaller than this probability. This is the probability that he'll make 10 in a row and then five in a row, or you know, any combination, that's what this part takes care of. It counts all the ways that you put. so 10 in a row, not in a row, it doesn't matter. Any combination of 10 shots out of 15. So why is it so unlikely that it'll make 10? I thought it was really good. Exactly 10, right? So why is this so unlikely? What would what like what would be more likely? Ten or ten or less, or maybe ten or more. But yeah, like, or more. what? Like, if you were to make exactly so many shots, what what would be the most likely number of shots that he would exactly make? One. One. Zero. He is ninety-three percent accurate. You think it's pretty likely that he'll miss fourteen <laughs> times? 
Okay, but not at least one. So small. Definitely cool. you make at least one, but I'm asking of all of the exact yeah, but numbers. He's good, so he could do exactly one and then purposely list the others. Yeah, because we Any of us could do that. We could take shots until we make one and then just throw the rest on the floor. That's what I usually do. do. Come on. Do. What's more likely than making exactly 10? Like exactly how many would be more likely? Okay, so what are we saying? More likely exactly how many? I think 14 would be more likely than he makes exactly 10. Yeah, because it's really unlikely that he misses. So why would we assume it was pretty likely that he would miss five times out of 15? That seems pretty unlikely because it's unlikely that he'll miss a single shot, like any particular shot. Uh, how good is he? What percentage of the time does he make it? 92.7. So he should make about 92.7 of these shots, right? What's 92.7% of 15 shots? 13.9. 13.9, so it sounds like 14 is going to be the most likely exact amount. Okay. The probability that he makes 14 or less, you know, or at the most 14, is going to be pretty high. Because then we just add all those probabilities of, of fewer shots than 14. Uh, at least 14, that's going to be pretty high. So keep in mind when you get this and you think, he's really good, Why, how could he not make 10? You can make at least 10, at but least, not at exactly. least, yeah. At least, yes, if you can make at least, it's very likely you can make at least 10. It's that yeah. good. But exactly, it's very unlikely. I mean, like, I'm better. But... Right, right. But we all know that. Yeah. Um, other questions? No, that's it. Okay. So, then, let's go a piece of paper. Wow. Okay, so for number six. Sorry, I didn't ask you to talk, or maybe I did, but I fell asleep. And I just said, Could you all just start talking a lot? That would make me really happy. Do number six. Pay attention. You are so welcome, sir. Okay, so what this chart represents is. So we're going to do something uh, four times, and they did not include the probability that it happened zero times. But out of four times, here's the probability that exactly one time we succeed. So you know, into four free throw shots, here's the probability that we make exactly one of those. Of course, this wouldn't work for that problem because the probability of him making only one would be so low because he makes so many. So all this, is, all this is saying is out of four times, here's the probability that you do it exactly once, that you succeed exactly twice, that you succeed exactly three times, that you succeed exactly four times. Basically, they did the formula four times and then graphed the probabilities that they found. Okay. So at number six, the probability that x is equal to one, right, or that you succeed once out of four times. How big is that probability? Point one. Point this is 0.2 and this is 0.4, so this must be 0.1 and this must be 0.3. So it's 0.1 likely. It's 10% likely. What's the probability that x is odd that you succeed an odd number of times? 0.5, yeah, we, get, we could uh, succeed three times or, or one time. So we add those probabilities together, five. 0.5. Okay, so uh, first of all, it's a real statistic, so it's kind of an astounding statistic. 30% of the internet is used to stream Netflix in peak hours. I know that I contribute to that. Anybody else? So, yeah, I don't know, that's like 30% of the people in here are saying they do that. Oh, I guess that's true. Um, also, another statistic is 58% of Americans subscribe to Netflix. I don't know anything that 58% of Americans all do. I don't know. That's a lot. That's amazing. So anyway, um, if you were to ask a random person who's using the internet at peak hours, how likely is it that they would say, yeah, I'm using it for Netflix? 30%. 30%. 30%. 
So if you ask 100 people, we want to figure out the probability that exactly 35 of them would say uh, that they are using the internet for Netflix. So are we doing the same thing time after time after time after time? Like a bunch of times in a row? Yeah, what are we doing over and over and over again? Asking people a question. Yes or no question. Are you using the internet for Netflix right now? Uh, yes or no. So, let's see. I'm going to ask 100 people if they're using the internet for Netflix. Uh, and we want 35 of them to say yes. That means that 35 yes. We're going to have 35 instances of saying yes. How likely is each of those yeses? 30%, 0.3 times 0.3 times 0.3 times 0.3 times 0.3 for 35 times. So that's going to be 0.3 to the 35th power. And then the rest of the time we'll see no's, which is how likely? 0.7, 65 times. This is the probability of any arrangement of 35 yeses out of 100 questions, out of 100 uh, questions asked. Um, but that's only, this is only one way. How many ways can we get 35 yeses out of 100 questions? 200 C35. So this probability, when you multiply 0.3 to the 35th times 0.7 to the 65th, that would be the probability of any specific arrangement of 35 yeses out of 100 questions asked. But 100 C35 would account for all of them. So we'd add up all of them or multiply 100 C35 times that probability of that specific arrangement. Do we have that? So, not too likely. What would be the most likely? The most likely number of yeses, do you think? Thirty people, thirty households. Yeah, that seems to make sense. Out of a hundred, thirty percent of a hundred. That's easy. Thirty. So we're just a little bit beyond that. Not that it's would be incredibly likely that exactly 30 people would say yes, but it would be the most likely thing for 30 people to say yes. Okay. The trick here is to recognize, I mean, using the formula is not, not too difficult. It's recognizing that the formula is applicable. We need to recognize that we're doing the same thing repeatedly over and over and over. We're asking that question 100 times, we're flipping a coin 75 times, we're rolling a die 20 times, we are pulling a, a, a ball out of a bag 27 times, like whatever we're doing, we're doing the same thing over and over and over, and the probability of success on any trial is the same. That's going to happen 20 times. 20 times. That would be like the probability that we get the first 12 are fives and the last 20 are not fives. But that's not the only way it can happen. It can happen in 32C12 ways. That, that's our probability. It. 
what's the most likely number of fives that you would get? Most likely number of fives. Why do you say six? It's out of 32, though, right? And how often do you get a five? Well, like what's the probability of getting a, a, probability of getting a, a five? One of six. So in any string of, of, of die rolls, we should see a five about how often? Well, what are the six? You're a sixth of the time, right? So what's a sixth of 32? So 5.3. 5.3, yeah. 5 so sounds like five. If we were to look at all the probabilities of all the numbers of sixes we could get, or, or sorry, fives, sounds like five, fives would be the most likely thing. Wouldn't be very likely that we would get 32 fives. It would be incredibly unlikely. It's also not the most likely thing that we would only get one to five, because that would mean that we didn't get that five a lot of times that we should. Five would be more likely. Okay, so score that out of eight. Yeah. 